What's up Garage Gym Nation? This is Sam from Garage Gym Reviews and today I have my good friend Jacob here with me. I called Jacob in because as you guys all know, in my endless pursuit for saving money and being cheap, I love doing DIY projects. What's your background? What do you do? Well, I've been coaching weightlifting for four years, training people for more than that. Um, I've also been certified in CrossFit and personal training, and uh, I coach a couple other sports as well. I've built a lot of gyms, built a lot of equipment for myself, mostly out of necessity, so I've learned some tips and tricks that I can help you with. So, Jacob is here to help us with what? We're building utility blocks today. All right, so we're gonna head to Lowe's, get some supplies, get some tools we need. Let's build something together. Let's build something together. Have to ride in the back. I do. <laughs> Alright. Ready to go? Nathan, you comfortable? Nope. Sweet. <laughs> Alright, so what is a utility block? What do you use it for? Did you come up with the idea or did you see someone else do it? Well, I had seen something similar in my first weightlifting coach's gym. They was using it as pulling blocks and I made a couple design changes and that's what I wanted it for was weightlifting pulling blocks, you know, okay. like 12 inches tall, bar sits right at the knee. A lot of times with CrossFit, you see people scaling up and down with things like box jumps, you know, standard box is 20 by 24 by 30. A lot of people can't jump on the 20. So we had a smaller box that was way more sturdy than a typical plyo box okay. that people felt very comfortable jumping on. The other thing we use it for myself was just like heavy step ups. I mean, I've always liked doing heavy step ups. And then, you know, we got into situations where, you know, we, we might need to use an incline bench and we don't have one or somebody's using it for something else. We can just prop up one side on top of that block. Ooh, I mean, that's like a flat bench. Yeah, prop, just, a, okay. just a regular flat bench, yeah. put one side up on it. Those were like the main uses we saw for it, but it's just a very versatile, multi purpose piece of equipment. Well, yeah, you want to have a beer in the garage, have some buddies over, yeah. break out some utility blocks. <laughs> exactly, that's and right. wind down on Friday night. That's right. All right, we are here at good old Low Depot. You guys ready? Yep. Nathan, you ready? Let's do it. There's <laughs> <laughs> a weird trap door back there. <laughs> what, what kind of tools do we need for for a job like this? Just a, just a saw and a- uh, Hand saw? A drill. Yeah, a circular saw. That's what I like to use. You don't want to like hand cut it? Like no, no real DIY. not this time. <laughs> okay. 18 two by fours, yep. one sheet of plywood. How many utility blocks is that gonna make? What size are we trying to make these? Two, 20 by 30 inches, about 14 inches tall. Okay. Would you like to come this way? <laughs> nice, good one. I think we're down this aisle. Down here. Not even from here, it already has this Lowe's mapped out. It's a sixth sense, dude. Sixth you sense. know how much of my life I've spent in Lowe's? <laughs> so we need how many of these? 18. 18. Yeah. Gotta do the straight check here. Gotta watch out for that. You go not missing on that one. Yeah. We need a sheet of plywood, three quarter inch. Four by eight. Oh yeah, that's solid. All right, deck screws? Deck screws, yep. Deck screws. There we go. What size of deck screws do you recommend? It's like two and a half inches is good for going through two by fours. Okay. And how many always, do you need for a utility box? I would say get at least two boxes of these. Two boxes of those? Yeah, so these are about 75 pieces, so somewhere around 150, 200. Dang. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be running some screws today. And I always like the uh, the hex head, because I've stripped so many Phillips head in my life. Okay. I, just, I, don't, I don't mess with them whatsoever. Yeah. Alright, got some Woodrow Wilson here. It was necessary. All right, we're back. We're gonna go ahead and get our workstation set up. We are going to be cutting the wood out here, uh, just because mainly I don't want sawdust all over the uh, GGR headquarters for the next month and a half. So uh, 
Let's get started. All right, let's cut some wood. Well, hello. A little DIY, you know. <laughs> I like my glasses. Yes. <laughs> All right, so first thing we gotta do is we gotta measure out a rectangle here, 20 by 30, okay? And we gotta mark it. Right. And then we gotta cut it. And those are our boards. All right, All right. let's do it. So we need a 20 by 30. I say we just cut 30 inches in here, cut our two 20s. There'll be a little bit left over there. Um, and then from there, we need six total. So I always like to just take the best piece that we cut initially and just trace it out of the remaining wood. Is there a lock button so here somewhere? 30 inches out from the side here. All right, so we've got our 30 inch mark. Get rid of this thing. Mark this up and just extend that line out. And we'll come over and do the same thing on the other side. From there, I find the straightest piece of wood. If I don't have a straight edge or anything like that. Ooh, that's a good idea. Never even thought about that. I'm gonna go 20 inches out from the side. 20 inches out from this side as well. Same marks up here on this line. It's just marking off two 20 by 30 rectangles. And there we have it. We use this to get us going a little bit straighter off the bat. And then we're back to our straight piece of wood. That lines up really well. Again on this side. Do we have a? Do we happen to have a kettlebell around here or anything like that? Yep, nothing like that. There you go. Cool. So we're gonna take that straight two by four again, and we're gonna use it as a guide for our blade. So I'm gonna line this blade up with right where my line is, and then I'll push this two by four up against it. Now we're good. Good. We'll go ahead and place that down. I'll hold that in place. That's going to help me keep a straight line going. Place that on top. Beautiful. And am I going right on the line with it? Yeah, go right on the line. Okay. Yeah, I measured just a little bit over. Go all the way through, and I'll pull this one off as it's falling. Okay. Probably not uh, OSHA certified putting my hand right underneath there, but that's, that's fine. That's true. So now we're gonna take what I think is the straightest piece or the best best cut one. We're taking it over to the other side, okay? The reason for that is because the other side has the manufacturer's cut, which is you know gonna be a little bit straighter than anything we just did over on this side. From there, I just line up the corners and trace. Now the reason we do this instead of just making a grid is so that when we trace this, the marking is actually outside of what we want. So we can just cut along the line and we don't have to worry about accounting for the width of the blade. If we just marked out the grid, everything's gonna be you know, that much off. There we go. Basically, we're, we're gonna cut all these two by fours and that'll make up the actual height of the block. So we'll Let's do it. toss these to the side for now. What's the old saying? Measure once, cut twice? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, so now we've got six of these 20 by 30 plank from the plywood. And these will be our toppers. This will go on the top of each block. So two by fours will give it the height that we need and that's how we customize it. This is just to make sure we have a nice stable level surface to step on. Cool. Alright, so right now we're cutting all the 30 inch boards. For the sake of time and for making things consistent, we just measured the first board, 30 inches. 
We put it up under the blade, figured out where it needed to be, and then put a wall right there. So every time we just feed a new one in, it butts up against that wall, and we're not drawing 30 lines every single time. Genius. Makes it a little bit quicker. And we keep so it how many 30 inch boards are you gonna cut in total? We're cutting 30 total 30 for total. two blocks. Okay. So it'll be 15 per block. Sometimes you are gonna get two by fours that are kind of chippy like this. It's not a huge deal when it comes to the structure. I just put them in the middle of it, not on the bottom where they'll just keep getting chipped off. All right, and that should be all of them. Now we're gonna cut our 20s. We need 32 of them. You wanna do as much of the work as you can directly underneath a blade. Maximum safety, right? Put this thing up right underneath the blade where I want it. He's gonna butt that up. Good right there? Yep. Perfect. Good. And we cut our first one. And so begins the layout. So, the bottom layer here, we've got three of these spanning 20 inches wide. Make sure we're relatively centered. Make sure we're decently straight. There we go, that's our bottom layer. And then as we cut more of these, we have one, two, three, four, and you just alternate. More 20s. Get to cutting. Yep. All she wrote. Time to get the leaf blower. Yep. Oh, sorry, did I get you? Uh, yeah. Almost 90% of the time I go to get my leaf blower at home, it is dead because my kids steal it and do that same thing, chase each other around. <laughs> I was gonna say chasing each other around, blowing each other, but I decided to miss that, so. Yeah. Not the best choice of words. Yeah. Well, we got everything cut. That's the most time consuming part. Now we just need to lay it out. A box like this is great for templating and uh, Start screwing it in. Using this convenient bio box, which is 20 by 30 on the top to keep us oriented and keep us measuring well, but I'm also gonna use this sheet of plywood. Make sure my frame is good from the start. It's right around the edges of here. Now again, these cuts weren't perfect, so there may be a little overhang, but if you're really picky about that, you just sand it right off, everything's fine. What we're building here is, this is our top layer here. So this is gonna have five of these 30 inch pieces going across just to make a more stable surface up top. But then after that, any 30 inch pieces we do, there'll just be three of them going across. Um, this is just to create a little more protection. If you are dropping weights on here, it'll help not have a, a big dip where the, the plywood can cave through. All right, so we're spacing out these four 20 inch pieces to where this middlemost edge of the second one is about 12 and three quarters of an inch, 12 and a half. It's about 17 and three quarters from this end. All right, so now we know we're pretty much centered again. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're laid out. From here, we're just gonna get these all screwed in. All right, from there, it's just a nice little assembly line process. You just throw your next three up, put a few screws in, throw the horizontal ones on, and then we keep going. And one thing to consider when you do this is every time you drill, you're gonna drill in a different spot than you did before. So if I try and put this directly through the center of this, you know, where, where they intersect, I'm probably gonna be trying to drill straight into a screw that's right beneath it. That's gold, that is gold. That's stuff you don't think about until it's too late. All right, so here's our completed utility block. And as we know, name of the game in the home gym is versatility. Getting a bunch of uses out of one equipment or stuff you already have. So we've got a flat bench. We want to hit some incline. So we're going to have a modification for equipment we already have. Place this back end up on top. Place it down nice and sturdy. And I can hit my sets of incline. Feels pretty sturdy. And here's just a handful of exercises you can incorporate this block to. 
We got millions of other options though. This has been awesome. Jacob, thank you so much for coming and hanging out today Absolutely. with us. Uh, if you guys do want to build a couple of utility boxes like this, it's going to be right around 160 bucks to build two 20 by 30 boxes. Great price. If you want to see more DIY videos like this one, drop some ideas to us down in the comments below. We'd love to hear some ideas that we haven't seen anyone else do. We would love to try to take that challenge on. I'm Sam from Garage Gym Reviews. I'm Jacob from Garage Gym Reviews. And we will see you next time. Peace.